Got a great show planned for you today. Good afternoon, Evan. How are you today, I'm Ken? I'm fine. I'm all right. Yeah, all right. I'm I mean, fine. I'm fine. I'm all right. Why are you all right? I'm all right. I was disappointed. I was rooting for the Giants last night. You said the Giants were going to get blown out. Just because I predict something doesn't mean I want it to happen. But what I witnessed for 60 minutes is what we all witnessed. The New York Giants don't have a lot of talent on their football team. No, they don't, especially at the wide receiver position. You know, obviously, no Kadarius Tony. Galladay drops a huge third down pass. And uh, what's his name? Sills falls down on a route. Yes. Like, what, what are we doing? The wide receivers, absolutely. The offensive line, this side of Andrew Thomas, absolutely. The linebackers, absolutely. Tate Crowder just missed another uh, another tackle. The defensive line without Leonard Williams, absolutely. They are a team that's overachieved. They even overachieved last night. Yeah, they, they were that, in that football game. They sure were. And if guys step up and make not crazy plays, basic plays, running routes, catching balls, blocking a little bit, the New York Giants could have stolen a victory. Absolutely. Because I agree with you. Talent-wise, the Cowboys are better. It's not even close. Yep. I and agree I think 100%. That, and I think, and we're three weeks in now, and we got a lot more weeks to judge, but it's a reason to look at this coaching staff and say, okay, I may not be happy with the result last night, but, boy, I still have faith in this head coach. I still have faith in this defensive coordinator because talent-wise last night, I'm telling you, the guy they missed the most was Leonard Williams. Leonard Williams, who never misses NFL games, missed the game last night, but they couldn't stop the run. And there were guys on that defensive line last night that you never heard of. No, they gave up like 200 yards on the ground. You're right about that. Uh, And here's the other thing. You know, they came into the game with uh, Daniel Jones, to his credit, did not have the bad turnover last night, and he was under duress the good majority of his uh, d- uh, dropbacks. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, listen, he's been pressured more than any other quarterback in the NFL, and last night it was obvious to me, I'm sure to you, they didn't want Micah Parsons to beat him on defense. Right. Uh, and he didn't. I think he had one tackle for the entire game, but everybody else Dude, was in that backfield. A so wave. I, I actually felt bad at one point for Danny Jones. It, he it, played okay. It was a wave of pressure, snap after snap after snap. Imagine yeah. this. If you put Joe Flacco behind that offensive line last night, what would have happened? Oh, uh, would, they would have lost by 40. And I bring that up for two reasons. Number one, to remind you that Joe Flacco is a statue. But number two, to appreciate that while I've never been a big supporter of Daniel Jones and why I don't think last night proves he's a franchise quarterback or he's a savior or he's going to be here next year, Daniel Jones a lot of times last night made something out of getting killed. He wasn't the problem last night. And no. he has been in previous games, obviously, he turning the ball over. But I thought you saw a mature veteran quarterback last night. I don't even care about his numbers. What is he, like 20 or 37, 196 yards, uh, sacked five times, pressured 24 times, which is the most in, like, no joke, 15 years uh, for Giant football. Danny Jones was not the problem. Saquon Barkley had a good game, was not the problem. The offensive line, the defensive line, they were the problem. And I think the, the point should be made that you made which is sometimes hard to see when you lose a divisional game on Monday Night Football that you're all amped up for. And I get it because emotions you know, run crazy. You got a chance to be 3-0, mm-hmm. and beat the hated Cowboys, keep pace with the hated Eagles, go into a game next week. If you're 3-0, and you're feeling pretty good about playing the Bears next week, right? Right. And, and here's where I think people miss, and I think you made a good point out of the gate. You know, we juxtapose a lot the Giants and the Jets, rightfully so. They play in this town. The New York Giants, even in a loss last night, are very well coached. Yes. The New York Jets are hardly are not. coached. Well, and it's a striking difference. Like, yeah, I there's no doubt in my mind that if the New York Jet coaching staff was on the Giants' sideline last night, they lose that game by 30 points. Yeah. I'm convinced of it. Well, yeah, because I'm with I, you. I think you look at this Giant team. Look at their defensive line last night. Had you ever heard of DJ Davidson? No, I Had not. you ever heard of Henry Mondo? Still haven't heard of him. I mean, the Giants are Is he shooting. a football player? He is a football okay. player. And DJ Davidson, I think, was called for a penalty late. I'm forgetting which one it was. Was it the offsides or something? They're dressing guys. They are playing guys significant amount of snaps who I don't think are very good. Yeah. And so what I thought last night, especially towards the end of the game when it was obvious the result, is that Joe Shane and Brian Dable so- told us something at their press conference a few months ago, and they said, look, essentially we're rebuilding, but we're going to try to compete as we restructure right. we're this not roster. Lay- we're not laying down for anybody. If we win a couple yes. games, great. Last night's a great example of that. 
Look at the talent that was on the field. You brought up wide receiver. I haven't even gone off on that. But look at wide receiver. Yeah. Look at the guys they're throwing out there. Look at the linebackers that are out there last night. Look at the defensive linemen that are out there last night. This is not a talented football team yet. With three games into the season, somehow they've won two games, and they had a legitimate chance to steal last night's game. Yeah, And, and that's a way, sign of a well-coached and team. And moving forward off for their game against the Chicago Bears, that's a toss-up to me. It's 50-50. You know, the Bears aren't a great team. They don't have a great offense. So if you told me that they win a game, you know, 14-13 next week, absolutely on the table. Right. Three and one's legitimate for the Giants. And I do think this, you found a head coach. I'll give you that. Brian Dable and his coaching staff uh, are doing a very, very good job. It just sucks that, you know, it's Monday night. It's the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. You're 2-0, and so you go in all amped up that, oh, man, we're going to be 3-0. and yeah. This might be the craziest season of any giant season I've ever seen. Yeah. And then it wasn't. Yeah. And that part of it's deflating. But I would think that, I think if you're an honest giant fan today, you would say kind of what I'm saying. A, yeah, of course, disappointing you lost the game. B, you like what you said. Yeah, there, there's critiques I'd have. Two questions. I wouldn't even say they're critiques for this coaching staff. Two questions watching this game last night. One, try to establish the run more with Saquon Barkley early. Because he is good. And your quarterback's running for his life every yeah. other play. The second thing is this. The wide receiving core sucks, and Kenny Galladay is going to get a lot of attention. Kenny Galladay is not long for this world, even with the horrible injury to Sterling Shepard. But Darius Slayton, a couple of years ago, actually looked like a competent NFL player who is developing chemistry with Daniel Jones. Where is he? So I guess I question, and it's not even a criticism, because I don't even know if Darius Slayton would make that big of a difference, or if trying to establish the run with Saquon would have been the difference in this game. But those are questions on how to try to get more out of this offense. But right now, and I thought it was obvious last night, especially in a loss, they just don't have a lot of talent, man. No, and they, you know, you didn't think that after the first two games because they won them. Right. So we always talk about winning makes every pimple look good. Every wart look good. Uh, last night, of course, because they lost the game, you get, the Giants got exposed and this is not a knock on them. We knew this going in. They weren't expected to be 2-0. and They're not expected to be 3-0, and even 3-1, and which may happen next week. The Giants have very little to no but, offensive but, talent. By the way, this is, forget about being a knock on the Giants. I think it's a compliment for the Giants. This team was still essentially built by Dave Gettleman, who we all agree is like one of the worst general managers we've ever seen. Joe Shane and Brian Dayball have been able to add a little bit to this team. Evan Neal's going to be a guy that's going to be judged, and he had a very rough night last night, but it's only his third NFL game. We, I think we all knew going in this wasn't an incredibly yeah, talented it just, team. It just sucks, man. It's the Dallas effing Cowboys. And they could have won. Effing fans, and this was a game that was winnable. I don't think you're as good as the Dallas Cowboys. You know, I think they had the best player on both sides of the field, whether that's uh, Parsons on defense, C.D. Lamb on uh, offense, or you'll know, pick you know, your favorite poison, either Pollard or Zeke, because they ran the hell out of the ball last night. And they night. gave you a break when C.D. Lamb drops that easy touchdown yes, pass. he drops the touchdown pass, comes back and makes a ridiculous one-handed grab in the end zone. Meanwhile, you know, Galladay's dropping an easy ball on a big third down that could have been a potential drive changer for sure because he probably gets the first down there. Mm -hmm. You have a horrendous pass interference call on Sterling Shepard. And then, of course... You know, all the respect and love for Sterling Shepard, who comes all the way back from the Achilles injury, is making a difference to his credit. No doubt. On offense as a go-to wide receiver. He's their number one receiver. Because they don't have anybody else to throw the ball to a Tony not on the field. And then the turf monster got him. Hey, you got to bring it up, though, because you've brought this up more than me. So this yeah. is kind of your call. What's up with the MetLife turf? Dude, you got to bring it up again. Yep. Even Odell Beckham Jr. on Twitter is bringing it up. Yeah. Saying we got to do something about this, whether it's going to grass next year. Something's got to change because this has happened way too much over the last couple of I years. I mean, there's nobody within 100 yards of Sterling Shepard. I'm exaggerating, obviously. And he tore his ACL. It's over. Like his career might be over now. His giant career is almost certainly over after the Achilles and now this. And I'm not a big guy that talks a lot about the turf. But when you see that happen, and to be fair, we've seen it before in other stadiums. This is not unique to MetLife, although it seems like it, feels it happens like a it lot is. more at MetLife Stadium yeah. than anywhere else. And here's the thing I know it's less expensive. To have a turf field. I understand That's that. That's not a good enough answer, But it's man. not a good answer because you got two teams worth a combined $15 billion. 
There's no reason why MetLife Stadium can't have a grass field. And you know what? If the players from both teams, the Jets and Giants, feel strongly about this, I think sometimes you got to actually listen to them. I remember that Niner game a few years ago in which how many guys tore their ACL over the course of a couple of weeks? It's sad. And Sterling Shepard, who comes back from this brutal Achilles injury, to have that happen to him, and you're right. I don't know if we're ever going to see Sterling Shepard as a Giant ever again. It was a real shame on, like, the last play of the game, too, of I course. actually feel bad for him. I don't feel bad for Kenny Galladay. He didn't get hurt. I just don't feel bad for him. He's not getting Well, Kenny Galladay failed. Yeah, I know. I know. And by the way, when you chirp about not getting opportunities and then you get your number called on a big third down in a close game and you drop the ball, I know this is not realistic because of his cap situation and mm-hmm. where the Giants are at. I think he's a dead cap of 31 mil. I'd cut him. Well, you if, can't. No, no. If what, I could, I'd cut well, his no, ass but today. But you can do what Brian Dable's doing, which is basically telling a guy making a ton of money who's been a pro bowler, I'm not playing you. Yes. And by the way, I'm not playing you, even though the wide receiver room is one of the worst wide receiver rooms in the NFL. Like, he has to play, and he doesn't play. Right. Like, no joke. Like, going into next week, I have no faith that Kadarius Tony's going to be on the field. He's never healthy. He can't get on the field. He's never healthy. And now Sterling Shepard's out. Sills is going to be on the field, and he can't run a route without falling down. Am I blaming the MetLife turf for that? Or just he's uncoordinated? Well, I don't know. They have, they have bad wide receivers. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it's simple. And look, it doesn't help that Wendell Robinson is hurt and Kadarius Tony is hurt. I get it. They have some talent. But right now, the room that they put out there last night, that's not an NFL Which is wide why, receiving by core. By the way, it's even more impressive to me that this game was in doubt in the fourth they quarter. They had a shot, yeah. The Giants had a chance to make a drive to tie the game. They, other than Saquon Barkley, I give Danny Jones credit. He played a competent game and didn't turn the ball over. There's no chance for this team to score. It's crazy. The fact that they got the ball back with a little less than two minutes to go. With a, no timeouts, but still, a chance to come back and tie this game was incredible. It was a rough night for Evan Neal. It's not the end of the world. It's his third NFL game. But, boy, that was a baptism by fire for that poor kid. And he gets called for a false start on the yeah. final drive. He's <laughs> yeah. getting beaten by Lawrence all night. He had a tough day. It was a very <laughs> tough day for Evan Neal. The positive is, you know who never gets beat? Andrew Thomas never gets beat. Yeah, he's a stud. So he's you got a that stud. going for you. Yeah, meanwhile, while the uh, Giants were unfortunately losing... To the Dallas Cowboys, the New York Yankees were losing to Toronto 3-2. to And another game, and another no-home run game for Aaron Judge. And I'm not a legitimate Yankee fan. I'm a fake Yankee fan for the last two years. <laughs> yeah. And I've been very honest about that with the people, right? Yeah. I would tell you this, and I said it. It's funny. I kind of intimated this before the Red Sox series when I suggested to you that if I were the Red Sox... I would hit IBB him. Mm-hmm. I'd intentionally walk him every at bat. And yeah. we had that conversation, right? right? But now that he hasn't hit it, and it's been what, six games, seven games, whatever it is now, which I think is his longest drought of this year, game wise, without a single home run. And I know Yankee fans are going to be irked by this because you're so vested in him getting to 61 and then ultimately 62 and beyond. Mm-hmm. I hope he doesn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I, I want the Yankees to clinch the division tonight. Yeah. I hope they do that. And you've got uh, J-Mo on the mound against Jose Barrios tonight. And I know Toronto's, I think, still playing for a wild card. Yes, they're position, trying to right? secure the top wild card yeah. spot, which is significant. So I hope the Yankees win tonight and they clinch the division. Right. And then you can mess around with your lineup for the Orioles series and the Rangers series before we get ready for the playoffs in a couple weeks, right? Yeah. There's a big part of me, i got to be honest. I'm not rooting against Aaron Judge hitting it. I don't want to see it. Why are you ignoring the coolest part of this whole thing? What's the coolest part? I'm sorry, and if I'm in the minority, I apologize. The fact that poor Roger Maris' family has got to travel to two different continents to watch this guy not hit a home run. They get free tickets to pennant race baseball. I'm jealous. (laughs) Okay. Aaron Judge last night went one for three. And what does that mean, Big Mac? He knows. Guess who's number one in the batting race in the American League? Aaron Judge. Nice. Guess who right now, if the season ended today, would win the freaking triple crown? Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge. Okay, good. Last night. Big Mac, tell me if I'm wrong. Last night was a great night for Aaron Judge. Well, it depends. It was a, it was a good night. <laughs> Are you more interested in the uh, triple crown or in watching the ball fly out of the ballpark? The triple crown. All right, so it was a great night then. Anyway, I'm rooting against him now. Now I'm actively hoping and, and what are that you... now. I will say this. Yeah. When's the Orioles series start? Friday. 
Uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, right? Yes. Three games? Yes. And then they go to Texas to wrap it up, right? Four games in three days, yes. All right, those games are absolutely immaterial, don't mean anything, because they will have wrapped it up I officially think so. by then. I, I think, think so. we can all agree to that, right? Yes. Let's hope so. If you told me that he did it on Sunday, yeah. okay, I'm good with it. You want the Yankee fan to sweat this out? I wouldn't play him tonight. Why? You, you know, haven't clinched the division yet. Get him a day off. You're trying let to him, win games. And let him uh, rest a little bit. Well, why? A he got on base three times last night. A little rest for the weary. Why are you doing that? What's your reasoning? Because <laughs> I love pissing off fans. Yeah, but there yeah. may be some Yankee fans who have tickets to Friday night's game who are well, like, yeah, rest now, them. Now, <laughs> let me say this. There are people that clearly have bought tickets for all three games of the series against Baltimore to be either, either A, for them clinching the division, which in theory could uh, could wait till then if they lose to Toronto, right? Or B, to watch Aaron Judge hit whatever number home run it is, mm -hmm. 61, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, whatever it is. I kind of want it to go on now. You want it to continue? Because <laughs> I was totally vested in it when they were playing the Red Sox. Yeah. He had four cracks at it against the Red Sox, right? Right. He didn't get it done. Well, also, now I root against him. I have to admit, so last night I'm watching both games on DVR like I promised. And the thing that, I don't want to say it surprised me, but it was an observation the crowd in Toronto really didn't give a rat's ass. Like, you didn't have everyone standing with their camera phones out. When Aaron Judge came up, it's like, oh, Aaron Judge is up. So if he does hit his 61st, 62nd home run in Toronto, it's going to feel very blah. While at Yankee Stadium, it's an event. Yes. Everybody's standing. There's <laughs> silence right before the pitch is thrown. Yeah. The camera phones are going off. If he hits 61 in Toronto, it's going to be a very... It eh. would suck. It would suck for every Yankee fan that Did you either went that, to the though? game. The crowd didn't care. The crowd had no interest in it. No I mean, interest. there's a little smattering, but nothing really. They didn't care. Yeah, I agree with that. Listen, we got lots to do today. We'll take your calls all the way throughout. 877-337-6666. Quick Met note, I did reach out to Major League Baseball today, and I talked to them about the plans for the Mets Braves series. Yeah, what's the right? plan? What is the plan I need to know? The whole season's been about these three games in Atlanta, and there's a really good chance that a lot of those games are going to be postponed because of this horrific hurricane that's about to hit. So what do you got? I'll tell you after the break, but Major League Baseball is actively discussing a plan for the inevitable rainout in Atlanta. So we'll go over that with you throughout the afternoon as well. And we're going to have a nice special guest stop by in the 4 o'clock hour. And that special guest is my main man, Sid Rosenberg, who's got a book out that we're going to help him out with a little bit later on today, okay? Okay.